to find solutions. After a fast and furious sprint such as that, the cars get cleaned and then mechanics go to work. For Hrobler, the hard yards had been done, even though it was rough out there. It went very, very well. I'm very happy. The car was excellent today. Uh, Jean did a great job there in the navigator side. Um, it was rough. Uh, we had uh, to dodge all the rocks and all the tree stumps, uh, but we managed to do it. And uh, yes, uh, we, uh, except for the one car that we got from the front, uh, one of the guys from the mine probably, I don't know who had the biggest fright, me or him, uh, we didn't have any problems in the prologue and uh, hopefully it looks like we're going to start in the front. And that's a huge, huge advantage with all the dust and uh, I hope we're going to be able to start uh, first tomorrow. In the Castel Toyota Pint, there was a cautious optimism in the camp. Cronjau ever went as hard as he could. After all, he was 25 points behind. So far, so good. We've had a good clean run of the prologue. Uh, it was max attack for us, so we'll see in terms of the results. I think we're probably second at this stage. Um, but yeah, the, the vehicle was uh, really great. I mean, it was an absolute privilege to drive it through that uh, prologue. And uh, yeah, we'll wait and see for tomorrow. Your thoughts on the route? I was actually quite surprised. I enjoyed the route. Uh, it's quite a tough route for us. It's generally quite rough. And uh, what's happened is um, the organizers have got some pace into it. So it's quite nice to drive, although it's rough. And um, yeah, I must say I enjoyed it thoroughly. That was the consensus throughout. Ford's Woolridge was happy with a Ranger that was running like a Swiss timepiece. We're third on the road, which is uh, not exactly where I'd like to be, but I think all things being equal, we're quite happy with it. It was a nice track. A couple of little things caught us out here and there. In the first part, uh, just when we thought we knew exactly where we were going, the road would turn left or turn right, so there were a couple of changes and, and quite a bit of water out there. I don't know if they've had a bit of rain or where it's come from, but a couple of mud holes, which I think tomorrow can catch the guys out. Might have to be uh, to stop and have a look and just see tomorrow, but yeah, overall good. The car's fantastic. We made a couple of small changes to the front suspension, which is a big improvement. We were a bit cautious with the tyres because um, in the tyres that we're running at the moment are not the strongest, so I think we're all aware of that. And uh, I've seen a couple that have been cut up in pieces, so I'm maybe even more aware of just how weak they are. So we had to be a bit careful of that. Uh, when you get in the berms and things like that, you couldn't slide the car into it. So maybe a bit cautious with that, but overall we're very happy. The car ran like clockwork, the changes we've made have really worked well, and we're looking forward to tomorrow. I think it's going to be a long, hard race, 400 kilometers through the rocks and the dust and everything. So it's going to be good. Looking forward to it. For Henry Zermatten, the line had been drawn in the Sun City Sand in Class D. We went out there to beat Kutsia. I mean, the, the whole idea is while we're good mates and we're teammates, you know, there's still a race on. Um, he's still leading in the championship, so we have to pull out all the stops to catch him. And we saw his dust and we thought, you know what, we're going to pull out all the stops, go as fast as we can without breaking it, obviously, and then get to the end. We got to the end, he was standing at the finish line, he couldn't even get across the, I think he just managed to cross the finish line and he had a problem with his starter motor. So we're going to have a look at it tonight, see what's wrong with it. Uh, beautiful run with our car, no problem whatsoever, but you know, it's only a time trial. It's 70 k's, we've got another 400 k's of proper racing to do tomorrow. But uh, at Sun City, it's always an advantage to start a little further forward because the dust is incredible here. And if there's no wind, you could really spend a long day eating sand. The sand diet for the Harpers was severely reduced after they finished first. It seemed quite easy from the start. You know, I was in the groove and Ryan was nabbing perfectly. So, uh, you know, you can feel when you've had a good run. And we caught Evan after about halfway through the time trial, so we knew either he had a problem or we were just going very fast. So, uh, you know, we would have gone a bit quicker if, uh, if it wasn't for that dust. You know, we had dust for half the time trial, but um, we're happy with the result. And as all that dust settled, teams went to sleep, worked, or just pondered the next day's 400 k's worth of racing. One man who was making a racing comeback was Atang Makhachanene. He was driving for Jeff Minnett. It's like uh, rebuilding your body all over again. You know, it's, it's different. The pace is up, the car is different. We've never driven it. It was the first time I drove it yesterday. Well, I've, I did a little bit of child testing in Johannesburg, but not enough. And uh, it's really new. Now, can you tell us more about the car? Uh, I understand this is the latest porter off the production line and uh, it's got a rather radical design. It is the latest porter from the porter production line. I'm not a very technical man. I told everybody from the gearbox 
producer to the engine builder and the frame manufacturer, Big Potter, that I wanted something that was reliable, bulletproof, and uh, performed extremely well. What we did know was that the Nissan team were looking for something radical after championship log leader Duncan Foss broke a prop shaft and limped home with a 90-minute backlog. For his teammate Hobler, it was time to let her fly. <laughs> In the cool winter air, Cronier and Bergen got the count and the go and sped out to face 400 kilometers on a route which last year won the organizers the coveted Best Event of the Year award. They were hoping to emulate that. The race route was plotted out over the Royal Buffer King Nation's land and for the seventh time, the Ford of Woolridge and Schulthammer took off from the start line to ignite their challenge. There were also many photo opportunities early on, but our vantage point up in the chopper also gave us a fine look in on the treacherous landscape that the competitors would have to traverse. But it was clear, Krobler and Moore were loving it. with Cronier and Birkin on the attack from the get-go and having to chase hard. But perhaps pushing too hard. Lift, lift, lift. That little slip perhaps just enough to erode a little confidence. Cronier would have to work even harder to catch Krobler. The race was certainly on. Both Woolridge and Schultham are former national bike champions, and they for know how to read the terrain well. A great plus here at Sun City. And from the air, the Maritzburg man's smooth driving style is a pleasure to watch over the rough and tumble terrain. inside the cockpit, it was as smooth as it was on the outside. It was 100 kilometers to go before the designated service point, but it didn't look as if that worried the De Bruyne's as they plowed through, over and under just about everything and were pushing the XL dealer team car as hard as they could. The mountaineer and adventurer Tonnefson was also in good form and together with his English co-driver Evans, they made the Sassel Nissan Navara dance to their tune. The leaders in the special vehicle class were Nick and son Ryan Harper, who knew that in the opening four races, there was a different winner in each. They wanted their name on the Sun City Trophy this time. And they did a good job of avoiding all of that trouble eventually. Alfie Cox's car had had some temperature problems during the time trial, but the motor ride team had got it sorted for the race proper. Sixth out on the road. And in second in the specials, it was Whitehouse and Carlson who were going quickly, despite some gearbox problems and a bulky alternator. And while we look at the chopper shots, our thanks to NAC and Heli Media. The Regent Racing men were certainly flying along. In car now were the Solbots, who were third on the road and were very steady. But very wet, very quickly. Ah, Arnie, the life of a special driver and navigator. 
not always a pleasure. But it's worth a look from the outside too. Watch Quinton using the road book as a mud shield. Hope he finished with that page. Yeah, and even a slow approach didn't help with this waterhole. Hutchinson and Bergman soaked to the bone. And the motorite bat not far away either. It's dirty work, but someone has to do it. Gibson and Campbell were up a place or two after a fast start, but the dust was getting to them. And the Whites had also gone past Herman Silbold. The Ruacon bat was enjoying a good run early on in the northwest heat and dust. Thompson and Haviland came by next looking like they had just started. Hardly a speck of dust on their car. While the SP of Ferguson and West drone passed next, the Ranger just about skidded over the muddy water pass here and continued on its way. Matthews and Smith in their Century Property Bat have been one of the surprise packages of the season and they just picked up where they left off in Botswana with some very good racing. But the team that made the biggest splash there was Variawa and Rousseau. Their win after 15 years of trying for Shamir was well deserved. They were driving with quick caution and moving up the order. The 2005 special national champion Terence Marsh obviously likes his clothes dry as he tippy toed his way through here and it meant that Krinovot could read his race notes without too much trouble. Jan Krai was Mr. Consistent last year, but this time round he had only reached the finish line twice. He was certainly hoping to see it at Sun City. After the first two hours of racing, though, the Harpers had fallen foul of a major misfire and slipped down to seventh. The drive of the opening 120 minutes, though, belonged to Variawa, who had passed more than 10 cars and was doing some low-level flying. The Zermattens were holding station and thus first in the D-Class, with Ryobi Nissan up into the top 20 for the very first time. With Taylor and the tall Houghton gliding into a top eight place after some cautious and controlled driving early on. The Raysonics men here demonstrated just how tough driving in the mud can really be. Class E leaders Peckham and Centora also sporting a rather clean-looking Ford Ranger. Palmer and Fenta kept the pressure on in Class E in their 4x4 Mega World entry. After the first 140 Ks of racing, the production vehicle class was still dominated by Hrobler and Moore, who were in a class of their own. And some bad luck for Toyota. Kronje and Perkin had suffered two punctures and thus dropped out of the top five. The Sun City 400 continues right after this.